everybody worries sometimes. Maybe if you're a kid, you're a kid, you worry about a test coming up at school, or you worry about whether a bully on the bus is going to hit you. But adults worry sometimes too, and we have some things that we're concerned about. Maybe you're afraid that inflation is going to take a bigger bite out of your paycheck than it already is. Or, or maybe you're, you're worried that someone's going to break into your car and steal those presents in, in the car or whatever else you have in there. Or, or maybe you're just really concerned that you or your family is going to get, catch one of the viruses that's going around. It seems like so many people have just been really sick this season. So many things in life are beyond your control. Who can you turn to? What can you do? Well, I can tell you who you can turn to. Jesus. We're going to talk a little bit about him tonight. Trusting in Jesus is always better than worrying. Trusting in Jesus is always better than worrying. In, in the Bible, it's written down the words of Isaiah, the prophet. And he taught us that Jesus shows up in your life in four amazing ways. And the verse where he wrote them down is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Jesus shows up in your life as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And I love that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt in my own feeble way to act out each one of those ways that Jesus shows up in your life. And so I have a mysterious bag of strange and wonderful things here that's going to help me to act this out. So I'm going to need this stool. Would you mind just grabbing me this stool? Thank you. Thank you. How about applause for my helper, my dad? Thank you. Okay, so acting out the first one, wonderful counselor. Hmm. So tell me more about your struggles. How do you feel about that? Here's what you do. I will show you the right way to go. I'll show you the best path to take. I just need you to put me first. Okay, there's one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're too kind, literally. <laughs> way too kind. I see, I might put that right there for a moment because I don't know what else. Oh, oh yeah. Mighty God. You need that mountain moved? How far? Where would you like it? Okay, okay. He's the mighty God. And Jesus can handle anything that comes up in your life. Jesus is also the everlasting Father. I just did a, I, I spoke a message about this a week ago, and I hadn't really thought about Jesus being a father. But he is called everlasting Father, and he fathers you and me. If, you're, if, you're, if you put your faith in him, he fathers you by providing, correcting, encouraging, and doing all those things that fathers do. So I'm going to act that out for you. Okay, son, it's like this. When you shoot a basketball, just remember beef. Okay, remember that boy, beef, B-E-E-F. So first, get your balance steady, right foot just a little bit forward. All right, eyes on the same place on the rim every single time. Be consistent, boy, get your eyes up there. Good, good job. All right, now elbow under the ball, not flying out to the side, elbow underneath. All right, and then last but not least, follow through. Oh, yeah. Woo, nice. Thank you, thank you. All right, and then the last one is Prince of Peace. So if you got a crown, if you got an activity bag, let's take out your crowns. Make sure you get them on, and we'll put on our crowns together. This one is made for a person with a triangle head, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best here. There, okay. All right, so Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and that's why we, ha we have this crown, just to remember that. Um, he has uh, been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And when people seek Jesus' kingdom first, they have peace. All right? They have peace. I'm going to give this back to you if I could. I just realized I need to get that out of the way. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And applause for my helper. Excellent. So a prince 
has many titles. And I looked up the title of, the, of, of Prince William, uh, Prince of, uh, of England, and his official name, are you ready for this, is William Arthur Philip Lewis, Prince of Wales, Duke of Cornwall and Cambridge, Earl of Strathern, and my personal favorite, Baron Carrick Fergus. <laughs> wow. Baron of Carrick Fergus, get in here, sign for dinner. <laughs> That's a long title, but you know what Jesus' titles are? King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace. Those are his royal titles. And they remind us that he shall reign forever and ever. Every other earthly kingdom comes to an end, but Jesus reigns forever and ever. Well, the night that Jesus was born, some shepherds, come here, little lammy. Some shepherds were out in the field watching over their sheep. And I brought one of them with me here tonight. And all of a sudden, now this is in the time before electricity, this must have been especially shocking. The glorious light of God shined down on those shepherds in the middle of just the darkness of night. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared to these shepherds. And he said, that today Jesus, the Savior of the world, is born in Bethlehem. Well, that was shocking. That was amazing. But then thousands upon thousands of angels revealed themselves to those shepherds in the night sky, and they started singing and praising God, saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. So even from the very first angelic announcement of Jesus' birth, it was about peace. Jesus came to bring peace on earth. But not everybody has welcomed, them, welcomed him into their lives. Will you welcome Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into your life? When you're worried or you're afraid or you're stressed, you can always pray, and pray is just talking, praying is talking with Jesus. Trusting in Jesus is always better than worrying. Can we just say that out loud? Trusting in Jesus is always better than worrying. Yes. Now, sometimes Jesus takes away that thing that you're worried about or scared of or concerned about. But other times, instead of taking away that thing that's troubling you, he helps you feel better or peaceful on the inside. So sometimes Jesus calms the storm. Sometimes he calms his child. Let me show you what I mean. I, I need a helper. So I'm thinking, do you want to come help me? Yeah, come on up. All right. Let's give him some applause. Menashe. It's a big step, but I bet you can make it. Yeah, that's what I thought. You can make it. No problem. All right. Okay, so uh, it's, it's not very hard what I'm going to ask you to do. So hang on just a second, all right? So uh, congregation, don't do it yet. But in a minute, I'm going to count to three, and then I want to ask you to make as much noise as you can, clapping, shouting, whistling, stomping your feet, slapping your thighs, but not yet. Wait for the signal, one, two, three, all right? And then, uh, and then, uh, then uh, we'll go for a minute. We'll make as much noise as we can, and then I'm going to give you the cue, and all I want you to do uh, is just raise your hand to, to say to them, okay, stop making the noise. Can we just do a practice one? Just raise your hand. Good. And that, when he raised your hand... Immediate silence, all right? Okay, so that's what we're doing. So um, let's, I, th I think we're ready. I, I'm ready. You ready? I, I, I think so. We're, we're good. Okay, so on three, make as much noise as you can. One, two, three, go. Wow, that was a quick one. That was good job, man. Good job. Woo! All right, excellent. Okay, so sometimes... Uh, that, that, so that noise represents the, the troubling things in your life, the chaos of life, the turbulence, the, the things that worry you or scare you. Sometimes when you pray about those things, Jesus just goes, stop, and those things just stop. And he just, he just takes away whatever is troubling you. But sometimes the thing that's stressing you keeps happening. Uh, so I'm sorry to break this to you, but if you pray that Jesus takes away your math test, he probably won't. The math test is probably going to come anyway. But instead, what you can do is pray about how you are in that math test. You see the difference? And, and adults, troubles do come in life. 
They do. It's, it's a sad part of this broken world, but troubles do come. So when you trust in Jesus, he gives you peace on the inside no matter what happens. He's going to be with you even though hard times come. Okay, so now I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, and actually, I'm going to give you noise-canceling headphones. And let's see if they're still on. Power on, okay? And I'm going to give you some soothing, beautiful music. <laughs> you are going to love this. Okay, so would you put these on over your ears? I don't know if we, if uh, that's how big it is for me. Let's see if that's big for you. Is that good? Okay, is that good? How many fingers am I holding up? Two. Okay, good. <laughs> that's working great. Yeah. Excellent. Do you, do you hear the music? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to do it again, but this time, wait, if, wait till my signal to, to raise your hand, okay? Okay, okay. so everybody, one, two, three, noise. A little more. Good job. Can you give him a some applause? Yay! I'm going to take these off. Okay, now, so just a second. So that it was pretty noisy around you, and, and we know that's symbolizing all the noise and, and the hard things in life. Could you still hear them? Yeah. Yeah. But when I gave you this peace, didn't it seem at least a little nicer and friendlier and more peaceful? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now some applause. Good job, man. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent job. I love it. And that was not rehearsed. Okay. And, yep, yeah, very good. So sometimes Jesus just takes away whatever's going on, whatever's troubling you, and that gives you peace on the outside. Does that make sense? So from the outside, that thing that's troubling you is just gone, so now, now you have peace. Sometimes that thing still happens. That sickness is still here, that, that bad notice is still here, but Jesus gives you peace on the inside, and he takes you through it. He walks with you through it. Just like Menashe was aware of the noise and aware of what's going on around him, you will be aware stuff's going on around you, but you can have the peace that only the Prince of Peace brings on the inside. Trusting in Jesus is always better than worrying. And when you, you, when you trust him with those things, he becomes your Prince of Peace. Would you stand to your feet, everybody? Why don't you stand to your feet? And I would love to just pray for you. Would you just bow your heads with me for just a moment? I'd love to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you show up in our lives as the Prince of Peace. And so tonight, I just invite you to come and be the Prince of Peace for each of us who needs it, Lord. Some of us are facing very bad news. Some of us are facing very hard times. Some are lonely, some are sad, some are frustrated. But I know, Jesus, that you can be our Prince of Peace. You can be my Prince of Peace. You can be our Prince of Peace personally. And so I just pray, Jesus, come and remove that thing, remove that situation that is causing the stress or the fear or the danger. Lord, remove it. I, I pray, Lord, that's a, the best thing that, that from our limited understanding that we could pray for is, Lord, please just take that troubling situation away. But Lord, I know from personal experience, sometimes you don't always push the easy button in our lives. And you're working something in us for our greater good because you are, you are for us, you're not against us, you're for us. And so, Lord, I pray that if you choose to let that troubling situation still continue, then, Lord, I just pray that you would come and bring us your peace on the inside. Lord, I pray that you would calm that storm, but if you don't, then I just pray you calm your child. You would calm us in the midst of that storm. Lord, we praise you. I thank you. I thank you for peace, not only just today, but as we enter this new year. And with your head so bowed, I want to just give you one more invitation because I'd like to pray for you about uh, one more thing specifically. I don't know if you have ever put your faith in Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to make you new, but I want to invite you to do that, invite you to put your faith in Jesus.
not in your own uh, works. Like how, how many good works does it take to get to heaven? Like 10? Is it 50? Is it 150? Is it 1,000? There are no amount of good works, good behaviors, good actions you could take, charitable giving you could do. That, none of that gets you to heaven. Only one thing. And that is putting your faith in Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to do that today. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin. Turn the other way. Turn your life over to Jesus. And let him lead. Let him be your leader of your life. Let him call the shots. And when you put him first, you will find that he will show you the best path to take. And so with your heads bowed, I just want to ask you if today you would like to become a Christian, you'd like to put your faith in Jesus, to be his apprentice, would you just raise your hand? We've been doing that at other times during the service. And that would be a signal to me, Pastor, I, I am making the decision today to put my faith in Jesus. Maybe, maybe as a kid you, were, you went to church or you put your faith in Jesus as a kid and it's time to come back as a grown-up now. Or maybe you never have. This is your opportunity. Well, one, one more time, I'll just look across the congregation here. Raise your hand if, if today you're putting your faith in Jesus. Now, online, I cannot see you, but God can. And I just encourage you to, to raise your hand to God right where you are right now. And I'd love to just coach you all in a prayer. If, you, if today you're putting your faith in Jesus, would you just pray this from your heart? Pray it to Jesus. And church, let's just support it. Let's just pray together. Okay, repeat after me. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer tonight, you are part of the family of God. That is awesome. And we applaud you. That's fine. Give them some, give them some applause. Awesome. Well, if you made that decision, it is such a life-changing decision, but it's only a start. And I would love to ask you to do one of two things here just to help me know that you made that decision tonight. Either just write it on a Connect card, drop it in the offering box on your way out. And either way, whether or not you do that, head to the following Jesus table. It, we have prepared an online course for you, and we have the book and a swag bag to give you tonight on your way out. So there'll be someone there at the following Jesus table following the service. Make sure you head there. Online, you can also get it online, and you can, you can download the ebook as well. You can take that, that online course. So we want to help you to follow Jesus, not just start, but to follow, to continue to him.